Father, our hula hello is dedicated to wahini hula, and that's our focus. We are a wahini hula hello. This is going to be our number 12 in our what we call our Ea Kahula series. Ea Kahula means behold the hula. The theme that we've chosen is Ua Holo Pono Ni, which means that for you to be an accomplished hula dancer, you can only accomplish that through perseverance. <laughs> Our hula method takes a long time because we're the heel and the hip. I always tell my hula mothers, you know, that if you're patient, I'm patient too. And the coordination is difficult, mm -hmm. you know, as to other uh, methods of hula. So it takes us a good five, six, seven years. Most of them start at the age of five, and by the time they're like 12 or 13, they finally got it. I like hula because it's fun, and we don't get to do it very often, and my grandma's the teacher, and that's why I like it. I like to show everybody what our culture is all about. Hello. This hello we started in 1999 when my mother retired. Prior to that, I, I helped her to teach, you know, the hula, and then she retired and she said, okay, that's it, it's all you. So I yeah. called sister, I go, what does that mean now? <laughs> Actually, our hula started way back in, uh, I would say, what, 1860, with our great, great grandmother, Isabella Hali Allah. And what had happened at that moment in our Hawaiian history, a lot of the hula had gone underground because of the missionary influence. So our great, great grandmother, Isabella, was very good friends with Queen Lili Ookalani, and the common thread that they shared was music and my grandmother, uh, great-great-grandmother at that moment decided that Helen, Helen Deshea Beamer, which was her daughter, she would go to the hello and take hula. So this is how it started. I think the biggest takeaway for me from dancing for this long, you just kind of grow up and be a lot more kind of respectful and just more disciplined, like people were saying, and I think it's really shaped me. I just feel very honored to be able to practice hula and be a part of the tradition. Well, po'ohala means to, that was given by our grandmother Louise. And the mana'o is, is that it means to pass on from one generation to another, which, uh, yeah, that's exactly what we do. Yeah, yeah so. And then I, uh, when Sisa got my mother's lo'ea master title and my grandmother's master title, lo'ea means master in, in the hula. And the difference between a kumu hula and a lo'ea is that a loea represents a specific <coughs> style of hula. Like when we were growing up in Hawaii, you could tell the different halal style. 
like Johnny Lamho had his own style, mm -hmm. you know, because he came from a certain, a certain hula legacy. Mm -hmm. Henry Park from Kauai had his own style. The Beamers had their own style. So, you know, the hula had their styles and, and, and um, we really enjoyed all of that because then it gives more creativity, you know, to the art. The loea is like the gatekeeper of the style. So like, sisters are loea. So this is why she can change our style. Now, a kumu hula is actually an instructor, yeah, that teaches the hello. So she's kind of, sister's kind of very unique because she's a loea, but she's still a kumu hula. Uh, aloha, my name is Kinohi. I love hula because it has taught me life lessons, not just in the halau. It's taught me lessons outside in my everyday life. And this halau not only works on hula, but like Kinohi said, works on teaching us life lessons. I have learned patience, obedience, and how to work in a disciplined setting and how to thrive. So I have definitely grown as a hula dancer and I was very lucky to be able to be a part of this halau. And I can't wait to keep learning from, from my kumu and to keep growing as a person. Our family was very instrumental in taking the hula where it became more family based. And a lot of the hello still follow that thought till today. You know, where your, your hula legacy is passed on from one generation to the next. Hula has just become such a big part of my life because I live in an island that has so much tradition and culture and this halal has taught me so much about it. And it's a very great experience to learn and it teaches you how to perform on stage and you just need to pay attention and focus. It's helped a lot. I just enjoy dancing hula. I don't know. I just love it. Our grandmother Louise, she was the one that really brought the hula, uh, commercialized the hula, so to speak. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. What I'm saying is that where they took students from all ethnicities. And then uh, the family had opened the hello up uh, at Waikiki Beamer Hula Studio. And then, of course, at that time, you know, tourism was just beginning in Hawaii. And so uh, the family became very interwoven as hula was perceived uh, as being a market signature for the Hawaiian Islands. Mm -hmm. And it still is to this day. I love hula because it really teaches you discipline and it's really, I feel like it's really important to learn how to commit yourself to something from a really early age. So I've always appreciated that about dancing. I really like um, learning more about the Hawaiian culture. And um, I think, the discipline for us girls are really, it's like really good and it, it kind of helps us get a head start in life. Aloha, my name is Lehia and I've been dancing for about 10 years now. And I like hula because it is a big part of my culture and I'm all about learning more of it. 
Um, I've also made so much friends throughout Hula and became closer with everyone, like family. Hi, my name is Hala'i. I've been dancing Hula for about 15 years. Um, and I love dancing Hula because it's just like, it makes me more committed to like what I do and just like, it's a way to distract myself from other things that like are going on. And yeah, it just makes me happy. My name is Lahapa. I've been dancing hula with Kumu's uh, grandmother, Louise Beamer. I started at five years old, and then when Hulali opened up her studio in 1999. I joined her and have been dancing with her ever since. So right now, Sister is our fifth Kumuhula. This is the, the legacy that Sister has inherited from our four other Hula masters before her. In other words, there has to be some kind of consistency. There has to be a continuance. Although we realize that we are evolving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we are evolving. You know, Hawaii's moving into a different time and space. And so do our students. So the challenges that we have in putting these kind of productions together, yeah, is being able to form a, what I would say, a bridge of understanding, yeah, with our students, our parents, and our audience. <laughs> This is our challenge, you know, of how we're going to be able to continue, you know, giving this mana'o and, and giving these hulas. Because the easy thing is not to do them, <laughs> right? And then you see all the halals doing that. You know, just do e'ano kavika, kaheke o napua. But to do these deep chants, it takes this mindset. And it's difficult because our students, their families, they're just in a whole different time and space. Your kupuna, your ancestors, rest on your po'ohiwi. And only that thought is brought out through the hula. <laughs> That's a thought that comes from the chants, from the hula. Because the hula gives you an emotional meaning of the Hawaiian intellect, which you don't get from a history book. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, because you don't get the poetic imagery. And this is what our lawyers have dedicated their life to the poetic imagery. You know, it's not talking about worshiping Laka. It's not talking about worshiping the Hawaiian gods. It's a poetic imagery that gives you a sense, a time, a place, and a sense of destination. And with that comes values. Yeah. If you actually believe that the, the hula adornments are from the forest, why would you destroy it? <laughs> you see? That's the synergy, that, that's the energy uh, that goes throughout. But we both decided that we're not going to really force the next generation to carry on if they, so not, if they do not desire to do so. Because it's, it's difficult. So that's what she and I are talking about. She and I have these long discussions now. But to be a teacher, not everyone can be a teacher. And um, so... We're, we got over being sad. <laughs> we were sad for a while about it as we've been discussing that, but we're over it, right? Yes. Yes, we're over it. 
because we believe that you know they have to go their path whatever it may be you know and um, you know and, and we see it every every time like we're competing with sports we're competing with you know that's why we're so grateful really grateful that our ohana that stays with our hello the families are dedicated to the perpetuation of the culture we're grateful to our kupuna class because they're the foundation it takes really a hula hello is really a ohana hey, hey.